I'm fed up and I'm angry. Hello, welcome to the program. Uh, I kind of wish that I would do a live one and then I would have the videos on YouTube. That's what I imagine that this podcast could be like I uh, have. I wish that I had videos of me talking, but also if I had to do it live, I'd probably be freaked out. I'd probably be like, oh my God, now I'm going to fuck it up. At least at the beginning, but then you get over it. You just have to do enough. You just have to do it enough times. This is what I would imagine. Like if I wanted to do that or whatever, but it would be more because the point of it is that the point of life is that you challenge yourself to do something that you wouldn't conceive yourself to be able to do, like like do just a live podcast. But really, the reason so it'd be like, oh, that's kind of scary. That's a scary prospect to go into something new like that. I'm not familiar with that. It's much more easy. Of course, it's easier for me to just record this at my house and then I get to hold on to it and then put it out whenever I want to. But like, I mean, I put it out relatively quickly or at least I'm trying to. But uh, the real reason that I don't do a live video thing is because I don't, uh, I'm not going to put the work into that to make that happen as long as I'm just doing this on my own and I'm not going to pay somebody else to do, to set that up. I don't have the money to make it more professional than it is. But you know what? Isn't that sort of the charm or something? Isn't that sort of the charm? It's almost the charm? Maybe. At least that's what I hope it is the case, is that the podcast is a u universal enough format that uh, I can I can just make podcasts and be seen as a podcaster the same everybody else is as long as, because this is actually just how lots of them are. I mean, this is what people know a podcast to be is that you're just listening to it. Besides that, it's just like the ones that are more high and above are, they do videos of themselves every week, but I'm just like, not, uh, I don't have the resources to invest in something like that or else I would do it. I would do that. I think uh, it's just better to go into life to challenge yourself to do things like to make it so that you don't look into the future and say like my life is going to be this because it's not true that your life is going to be this forever. As long if, if you're telling yourself that, then you're just telling yourself a lie. Like you don't want to make yourself old when you're in your 20s and you can do that by saying that, oh, my life is over past this point. Pretty much the only thing left for me to do is die. But like if you realize and it would probably have to do with being content about your life. Like if you, you just got to realize that you have all like your life hasn't even started when you're in your twenties. Like and you have like, you have life to grow into and things to learn. Like you have new hobbies to take up or like languages to learn or, you know, destinations to go. That's probably the easiest one. It's probably the easiest way that you can change your understanding of the world if that's your goal if you're interested in challenging yourself to take on new ideas or whatever is just to go to a different place like if you went to europe or something like that like just to be there because at least for me for me any time that i leave columbus like just to go like 400 miles away just to go to wisconsin or tennessee or anywhere like it uh, it's a big enough change to my psyche that I'm like, oh, and like things feel new by the time I come back, like just by me being in a different location. But you should challenge, you should know that your life, you know, like you still have the potential to challenge yourself to do new things. Like I want to do stand up comedy one day. And it's not like it would have to be that I was funny or anything. I mean, it would actually, it would actually mean that you'd have to be funny actually it would it's not that it would have to be good well you'd have to be sort of capable of being funny like uh what i'm saying is just to do it would be the thing just to be up there and talk like just to speak i think that that would be fun if you it would be fun if you got over the hump of being on a stage wouldn't it that's what i'm thinking because if you get to the point that you can just engage with the audience and shit on them or whatever that's what i imagine would be really great about it and you would just have to go on stage enough times to not be like a moron like talking and babbling like not funny i mean it's really easy for me to picture myself being on stage and saying a bunch of jokes that aren't funny or like trying to be funny like but it's just so worrisome to to have that image in your head of you failing in front of people but it's just like that's the whole point like i would love to get over that hump and then like have 
less fear about the world. I mean, I, I guess maybe my goal overall is just to, like, I want to strive to live in a world where I'm not afraid of anything like that. Something like that couldn't be held over me. Like, oh, you'd be afraid of going on stage when you, yeah, like, like I'm sort of afraid of public speaking, but like, if I could live in a world where I could just say whatever, like be comfortable on a stage just to say whatever I feel like I would like that enough that it would just be something that I'd want to do. And you would get like, and you would get good at it, even if you weren't, if you weren't good in the beginning, like who doesn't want to be just me, the person that I am, like, I want to be a stand up comedian. Like always I emulate comedians. I spend hours watching interviews of different comedians, like old ones too, like Jay Leno, like Jay Leno is old ass. I've seen his, him do interviews or like Don Rickles or, um, you know, all of them. <laughs> George Carlin, like, I don't think, I don't look back, I don't listen to George Carlin's sets and think that they're really funny. I do listen to them. Like, I've heard them. I've heard plenty of clips of George Carlin. I'm just not like, oh, that's really funny, but I'm sure it was hilarious at the time. But comedy changes really quickly. Like, what's funny, It's it changes very fast. That's why people just live and die as comedians. Like, their stardom, a lot of them, it just goes straight up and then straight back down. Because... Sometimes their comedy can only be, can only hit as relevant for like a couple years because comedy changes. What we think is funny changes really fast because you don't, you're sick of laughing at the thing you already heard. Like comedy is that it is comedy at all that you make relevant, relevant, funny stuff is that you're saying new things than what was said before. Is the whole point you expand somebody's imagination in a direction that it hasn't been expanded before so like comedy in the past it doesn't sound funny at all or it's just but there are some stuff that hold up and there's some comedians that hold up because they know that the importance of it is adapting rather than making it so that what they say is some sort of tra tradition or understanding themselves to be the identity that's worked for them in the past like you can't be a comedian and be okay with being what you were you have to like you have to in order to be a great musical artist you have to put out new albums you have to put out like a new sound every album has to be something different from what it was before you have to be in the interest you have to be interested as an artist or as a comedian in not being seen as what you were before like because that's what's true about reality what's true about reality is that it always changes and if you're saying that you are just what you were before if you are trying to indulge in the identity that has paid off for you with your relationship to people before, then you're not engaging in reality as reality is actually practiced because the truth is reality continues and like new generations come and they set a new tone for what's funny or what reality is and you're the reality and like the era that you grew up in or even just the era that you lived in for the last three years, like the last three years of your life, that's not relevant going forward as long as new things have been added to the equation and reality tells you that new things are always added to the equation. And so like, I guess in order for you to be a successful comedian, you have to understand that the future is to be embraced. And that is the only possible way forward for you to continue to be successful because comedians rise and fall. Like Adam Sandler was God for a, couple years like and that people would probably forget that like there's a couple years that adam sandler was just on top of the world like he would go into an interview like on a late night show like jay leno or something and like get a huge standing ovation for like a couple years because he was making every movie he made was really popular and everybody loved all the movies he made like and besides that he was a comedian he was he was understood to be a great filmmaker and like be able to produce a film the right way or, or whatever because he made so many films that every that were well received like he was a well celebrated comedian for about a decade like and made a lot of films that people liked and uh then at, at some point he just made like one too many movies and people were like oh we're tired of this fucking guy like he made click or something and then at about that point everything was downhill from there for him for him for a while <clears throat> so we're like oh fuck adam sandler like he's not he's not funny anymore but it's so it can turn so quickly for you if you're a comedian same with dane cook like dane cook was like holy shit he's 
just changing the world with his comedy. Like I've never heard anything this funny before when he came out with Vicious Circle. Like when it when he came out with it, like that year and like the year that they played it on Comedy Central, because they they would actually play that on Comedy Central. Like and then, but it really didn't take very long for everybody to decide that actually Dane Cook is a horrible human being or whatever. We're just like ah fuck Dane Cook, even though he like. He had this whole career as a comedian, and I know that he's also been blamed for taking people's bits, but, like, there's nothing, uh, like, he maybe he did, like, he probably did take some people's bits, but it's not, like, as substantial a claim that he's false in comparison to some other people, like, like in comparison to Amy Schumer or uh, Carlos Mencia. Like, Amy Schumer is obviously has obviously taken people's bits if you've seen the video compilations of her uh parallel thinking or whatever like she's obviously taken people's bits like dane cook took some of them maybe or whatever but it's not like he used all of them primarily to for to compose his specials and stuff and he also had a career in comedy before he made it to the mainstream you know just like any of them do like like there is a time when before Dane Cook was even mainstream funny that everybody thought that he was hilarious as shit, you know, like when he just played in clubs and stuff before he was well known. But and then it got to a point where he went mainstream and everyone's like, oh, like they soured on him immediately. But there's just a lot of comedians that they follow that trajectory. But like musical artists follow that trajectory, too. Musical artists follow that trajectory too when they hit mainstream and then they just become like uh, the derivative pop music after that when they hit like if it's an alternative band they hit mainstream like they always just become derivative pop music or music that's meant to please lots of people because that's the standard that they understand themselves to be held to at the point that they make an album that is popular to a lot of people and then like it's hard to go back it's hard to it's hard to go back into alternative world or understand yourself to be like indie or on the cutting edge when you've already made it like so of course bands are going to follow that trajectory and so like so for a lot of comedians they can't they'll have like one really good special and then by the next time by their next special you're like oh i'm tired of that like i don't really i don't really like that anymore you know because they just didn't because they're just not able to maintain it but that's tons of comedians that's lots of them like uh mike burbiglia that's one that i'm thinking of he had this special like everybody knows what his funniest special is for some of these comedians like and i don't know the title of his funniest special but it's the one that he was using um the song by death cab for cutie as the out as the outro like i will follow you into the dark he used that as his outro, but it was just it was just a special where he was talking about his life, his relationship to like his now wife named Jenny and like uh, I think that was her name, Jenny, and then like a car crash incident that he was involved in and his problems with trying to accept like his whether or not he was right or wrong in the accident when he was in the right, but everybody was telling him falsely that he was wrong. Like it is a it was funny and also like informative and personal in exactly the right way and in personal in a way that was not not funny you know which is hard to do so this special by mike mike Birbiglia. but like anything else i feel like by the next special he put out if you put one out after that i was like oh like no i wouldn't listen to that or i wouldn't listen to the one before it either but like you uh because a lot of comedians they just they just have one good special in them like one mainstream good special i would say the same thing about john mulaney even though a lot of people wouldn't agree with me like he had he had two like as long as he was tra he was following the trajectory upward because the one that he's funniest for is new in town obviously new in town is the funniest one and the one before that was funny too and but after that like he's put out two others past that and you're like oh well he just like he hit mainstream and then those ones aren't as funny like if you ask me even though he has a certain he has a certain popularity beyond the specials you know anyway but like i don't really it's not one that i agree with it's kind of the popularity the popularity that he has now is not really tied to himself as a stand-up comedian i wouldn't say or like the humor that he could provide in a stand-up sort of way isn't really related to his popularity now even though he's still like like whatever i'm just saying comedians have a 
they usually just like have one but there's some comedians that are constantly funny um but that's not really something i it's not really something i have to argue but like but i always emulate comedians i always emulate stand up and like the stand up format i don't i don't know i haven't really like seen too many people stand ups lately like i myself don't watch them that much anymore when i used to just consume all of them like when i was in college for about 5 or 6 years i just watch everything stand up that existed and uh at this point i don't really watch stand up like maybe just the entertainment medium of it doesn't really do it for me anymore or something but uh like if i did stand up comedy i would try to do something new about it like rather than that it's just funny because it's really hard to be funny now because our generation like it's not hard to be funny if you are actually funny it's easy but like uh it's hard to say new th it's hard to say new things like you really just have to be and it's as you get older too you have to be wary about if you want to be successful at being a comedian and while you're getting older you have to be aware that as you get older you seek to not like understand individualize yourself or understand yourself to be different you just kind of like try to identify yourself to be one thing and see yourself more as your identity and the time period that you came from that's what you do as you get older rather than when you're younger you have a lot more potential to say that you're different from everybody else and then like and because when you're younger you know what is youthful and new you just know it naturally but then as you get older you don't know what the kids are doing like just the older that you get so you have to rely on like popular opinion rather than your own opinion for a lot of things because like you're just going to rely on like oh that popular opinion as dictated to us by like what people believe or just like what's current you have to rely on popular opinion for what's current rather than have your own opinions on what's current the older that you get because uh because you're not you're not adept in what's going on in all these areas but when you're younger you just naturally know what the world is like what's current about the world or what's popular like musically entertainment wise what is what is popular like what's a fad like you just know that when you're younger but when you're older it's not for recog being older is not for recognizing what kids are doing or whatever you know it's for it's for uh, like identifying yourself and like w being older is for being ridiculed like honestly like that you identify yourself and are ridiculable and so that's something you have to take into consideration as you get older is your awareness but like but i mean i'm saying like you can still act like you can still be young at heart quote unquote you can still like uh you can still be young you just got to make sure that you are in order to do that you have to relay you have to understand that you yourself still are valuable you as an individual and what you think is current about the world is still valuable you have to you have to boldly proclaim what you think the world is still as if you're a young person you have to understand like it it, it would involve understanding that you do know what the world is or whatever but as you get older you trust you trust less and less in your ability to understand the world to be what it is as you get older that's what i think you i mean being older is just less about trusting yourself it's not about trusting yourself as you get older because when you're younger it's about you you're like oh i hate you so so yeah, I do hate you. Like, I believe that I hate you. It's not irrelevant for me to say that I hate you or it's not out of touch. It doesn't make me look like a mean person to be angry and hate you is what you can do when you're younger. It doesn't make me feel out of touch to know that that's something is stupid or to call something out as being fake. You can do that when you're younger. Like, but when you're, but when you're older, you don't really have the, you don't have the capability for marrying truth with your violence. Like, you with your violence towards people like you like my violence towards people like my violence my cynicism for just being because you don't want to be isolated like because it's okay to be isolated when you're younger but when you're older you can't be isolated you can't 
formulate all these opinions that might that might possibly serve to isolate you uh if that makes any sense i'm sort of getting like uh sort of dancing around saying something really really good that would make un everybody understand exactly what i'm talking about i feel like i'm almost there so now's a good time to change the subject i guess or whatever like about being old versus young like i'm really trying to say it i'm really trying to say what that is but like if but so if i went into comedy i would have to understand that it's okay to do a fresh take on it rather than try to be derivative of the things i've already seen rather than for me to just go about stand-up comedy the way that i learned it to be growing up because like stand-up comedy in the format that i learned it growing up like is stand-up comedy a certain way and it's me and describing it or like if I went up on stage and was trying to just emulate stand-up comedy I've seen before, it would be me living in the past to a certain degree because stand-up comedy has evolved to be something else as it stands in the present moment. And I actually haven't consumed a lot of stand-up comedy to know exactly what it is in this moment, but that's just because I, I think I know what it is. It's just like not because I think a lot, I, in my opinion, a lot of the stand-up comedy that comes out now is just, emulative of stand-up comedy that happened like in 2005 to 2015 sort of like a like the beginning of the 2000 like 2005 to 2015 is like a golden decade for stand-up comedy really because we have the potential to see all of it like there's less barriers to entry for us seeing all of it because it's available on netflix but just available to us at all for our purchase because it used to just be that hbo would get a hold of some famous comedian but just like a couple like just a handful throughout a decade like throughout the 90s they're like oh they put out like hbo would put out comedy specials of people but you'd have to like be on hbo and pay the money for hbo and not a lot of people were doing that or they didn't see the value in paying extra money for tv when they were already starting to get lots of tv for free you know there's like barriers to entry in that all the really good comedians show up on hbo but there's still only a few of them but by like 2015 there's tons of stand-up comedians that you can cons you can see on youtube or netflix or whatever you can see all of them and like and just my generation it's more difficult to I'd say that it's difficult to uh, be a f have a fresh take on stand-up comedy um, with my generation be and, and still call it comedy exactly because my generation has consumed so much comedy like through YouTube, through us growing up with YouTube and Netflix and whatever, like and everybody on YouTube pretty much in order to be famous, that is our age sort of is trying to make like sketch comedy videos and outdo each other with their comedy like in youtube in a lot of ways or at least some of the early stuff is just like a competition to see who could be the most laughed at and whatever and i know that now it's kind of more about like video blogs where people aren't necessarily funny because there's there's we've gotten to a point where we've consumed so much comedy that we just kind of want people's realistic point of view it like integrated with something that's sort of humorous, but mostly just we want to hear what somebody is, has to say more than anything, whether or not that ends up being funny. And really a lot of times I think it's true that it's the f it's funny. Like you are just funny if you're able to just say what's on your mind, like, and you don't, you're, you're funny as long as you don't take yourself seriously. But like uh, people want at least more realism but that's that would only come as a result of us consuming so much comedy and really entertainment to the point that we're just like okay why don't why don't we take this in a different direction or we just have comedy that is more just a person explaining what reality is to them and so like it's hard to i would say that it would be hard at this point to just start out as a stand-up comedian because like stand-up itself is like if we think of it in those terms it like the most prominent that that idea was i'd say has already happened kind of happened in like 2005 to 2015 or so because i think a lot of stand-up that comes out now is representative of like when stand-up was good then like as long as because it's it's the same style like it's hard for people to deviate from the style of just like you know whatever it is now observational comedy observing something and like 
saying that they feel something about it personal because it's a it was a big it's a big deal through stand up comedy for people to explain stuff that's personal to them but tell it in a funny way but like I feel like we've already seen so much of observational and like people's insight on on regular observational everyday things that happen and them feeling something funny about it like oh I go to the store or just like somebody talking about I live with I live with two roommates and I'm 35 and like that's that's me like that's my life and there's nothing I can do like we share a life together like that's funny it's funny to say that it's just like that's um it's like you can only go so far with just like the stand up format as long as you understand it to be under that heading and that definition of stand up comedy because it can still be comedy it's just that maybe but there's people still that do stand-up comedy and do it just fine, and they're usually the people that are already successful in the years 2005 to 2015, you know? Like, Louis C.K. still puts out a banger, you know? Like, I, I listened to his newest thing. I bought it. Like, it was seven ninety nine. You can listen to his latest stand-up special. It's seven ninety nine on his website. It came out, like, at the beginning of April. And I bought it like the day that I heard about it because what better can you do with eight dollars really? Like I'm not gonna do anything better with that. So I spent that pretty quickly, and it was like his com Louis C.K.'s latest comedy special is as if he continued making comedy specials, and the scandal with him never happened. It's like as if he was just making a new comedy special for the year 2020. Like he just picked up exactly where he left off. And uh, I think that that's good. Like Louis C.K. is, well, in my mind, the greatest stand-up comedian of all time. Like, but that's that would have to do with the time that I grew up in. Like, he's the best. Like, you look up to him as a stand-up. Like, of course, I like Louis C.K. He's like the best stand-up of all time, in my opinion. Um, and as far as stand-up comedy is concerned, like my favorite comedian, that would be a different debate. That would be a different thing to say, but like Louis C.K. is the best stand-up in my opinion, or like that I consume is the stand-up content of what he's putting out, whatever. Like his stand-up is still good. Christelia's stand-up is always funny, like, but like he's popular. Like Anthony Jeselnik, stand-up is always funny. He's popular 2005 to 2015, for the most part, at least that's when he came up. So I guess what would defeat my argument is you're telling me somebody who became popular mostly after 2015 that is actually funny. Like, I guess Pete Davidson is kind of like a after 2015 comedian. And like, yeah, the stuff he says is funny. It's just that like at the point that I have to consider Pete Davidson as a stand-up, it's just like not really jiving with my idea of stand-up. But like, Maybe that's just because I only understand stand-up to be true 2005 to 2015 or like that's the most true that it is to me because that's when I grew up or whatever. But I think just the entertain like it's been used up for the most part. Like you shouldn't take it in a new direction, whatever. I'm sick of art. I don't, I don't fucking care. It doesn't like you can still be funny stand-up comedian. That's not what I'm, that's not what I'm saying. And I'm not saying that the medium is dead or anything like that. I'm saying, like, the stand-up medium is dead. That's all I'm trying to say. Like, I think the stand-up medium is dead, but just calling it stand-up. But I love comedy too much to say something like that. I'm saying that, like, comedy evolves and will be always be around because it's infinite things that comedy as a medium can be. I'm just saying the stand-up format, like, is sort of dead. And so when I, when I ramble on about something, it's because there's something I want to say about it that I'm not, I'm too worried about saying or something. Like, I don't want to be the guy that people pin it on me as saying that the stand-up format is dead. But that's just what I wanted to say. Like, if I could just continue on saying exactly what I wanted to say. Like, there's so much that I leave out that I don't just, I don't just get to say, but it's because you don't want to isolate yourself and sound totally cynical. You don't want to, I mean, you don't want to alienate your audience. I wonder what I'm. I wonder what I'm talking about. I guess my topic is comedy, but I don't really feel like tailoring it to a topic. I think really, as a comedian, you um, you can't go wrong if you just understand. Like, you would be a successful stand-up comedian as long as, 
like regardless of me saying that stand up as a medium is dead like you would be successful as long as you understand that you're not tailoring your act to anybody you're not trying to please anybody as long as you understand that what you're saying is just for everybody it's not for anybody in in particular because as long as you're doing that then you understand that you're not like disappointing people if you can do your stand up or be on a stage and speak from a position where you know that you're not disappointing people or even me making this podcast or even you just like sharing something on Facebook or just or like sharing something about yourself in conversation if you understand that you're not it's not about you disappointing or not disappointing somebody and that there isn't an audience for you yourself and that it's just what's important about you saying it is that you you get to say it like you have to enjoy saying things in order to be happy about being alive in order to be happy about being in a conversation with people and being around people is that you have to say things because it makes you happy to say them because you like to say them you can't say things you will be unhappy if you're just saying things to fit in the mold of a situation or because you feel obligated to buy into a reality that's going on around you when I go over to the dog park, everybody's explaining their dogs to each other. And this one person was like, to me, this person was like, oh, I don't know. It's just like, I know the, I usually just know the dog names before the people is I sort of remember only by the dog names It's just the fun character that you are because that's just part of the reality of being in a dog park. It's like, well, maybe you should know my name before the dog maybe or maybe you should know the dog first it doesn't matter it doesn't matter even though i'm complaining about it cynically right now like even though apparently it, to me i'm saying you should learn my name first it doesn't it, i'm saying like really it doesn't matter you can learn my dog first like ultimately i don't care you can learn my dog name first i'm just making i just have fun making fun of that character that is like oh it's just so like i can't differentiate dogs from people like there's there's dogs that like dog names come to me and people names come to me and it's pretty much just like well the dog names come first because I guess that's I mean that's just more important about me in my life is that normally I think of it through what dog you have like if you're I'm in a room with coworkers at a meeting I pretty much just know people by what dogs they have because it's a ridiculous idea because it's not practical in line with the reality that's practiced with the world it's practical with the in line with the reality that's practiced in the dog park because I'm an asshole and uh but anyways my response to that guy would pretty much have been that like oh yeah like my dog likes to run my dog will run everywhere if he gets free like i don't there's no telling what he's gonna do he's just that way he freaks out and uh i'll tell you this side story um i went uh like in my old house that i lived in that i was renting there's a garage like uh nearby almost attached to the house and uh i was going outside to go to my car and i was bringing my dog with me i was going somewhere i was going to bring my dog ziggy and uh i opened the door and i was like uh, and my yard isn't fenced in and so i've been trying to like uh let my dog loose a little bit more as time goes on so to try to see if he'll like follow me or listen to me and so uh i walked outside and I was just going to the garage and I like opened the door for Ziggy to run out and he just like stood there for a second and I'm like, all right, Ziggy, you can, you can come out here because he's usually, he's always on a leash and he wasn't used to that. So he just paused for a second and I was like, Ziggy, you can come out. And then he paused and then he sprinted out the door. He like ran around the yard area for a little bit. I'm like, Hey, Ziggy, Ziggy, Hey, uh, go to the garage. Hey, like trying to get him to listen to me. And he just doesn't, he didn't listen to me at all. And he uh, just like ran out of the yard area and just ran through the town. And I was chasing him for the next five minutes because he doesn't, uh, he'll just run everywhere. And I was like, I'm, I was thinking like, oh, he'll listen to me. Like he'll just follow, let's see, he'll probably just follow me to the garage at this time around because he's like been around me enough or whatever. No, he just, he likes to run everywhere. He's trying to escape. And, uh, why did I start talking about this besides that I wanted to I wanted to and I was like because that's what's fun it's fun to it's fun to say that it's fun to make fun of other people it's fun to not partake in 
realities that people put forward to you as long as you allow yourself to be like cynical allow, as long as you allow yourself to be in anger and against other people as long as you allow yourself to be against other people and you have to be in order to be a successful comedian you have to know that you have to know that, that new things are happening or you have to know that your opinion is you have to be happy about that's the thing you have to you have to be happy about what you're saying and what you're doing and to me what would really make me happy about being in a dog park is uh in that environment is just saying like ah yeah but whatever they are just dogs or just like like as long as you are talking about as long as you're not trying no as long as you know that you're not trying to disappoint people or like that it's about disappointing or not disappointing people as long as you enjoy saying the things that you're saying just that i focus on that there's certain superficialities in the environment m means that i am going to have a hard time with it like i'm going to make it unhappy like i don't need to be unhappy about it so that's that would also like me criticizing the reality isn't like me being happy about what i'm saying it's just like i know that it would make me happy to just say whatever i wanted because i'm i'm if i was entirely cynical like as long as i'm in, if i was entirely cynical then i could just say whatever i wanted but if i was a stand up comedian like like i would be i feel like you would be successful as a stand up comedian as long as you as long as you weren't disappointing other people like and you knew that you weren't when you spoke but like the only way for you to speak and not think about that you're disappointing people is just to speak what is truthfully on your mind rather than tailoring it to an audience or making it presentable so i feel like comedy progresses to i mean it progresses to for it progresses to make things less presentable and less as a presentation and more not tailored to an audience that's what like comedy evolves to do it evolves to make it so that you're just because that's what would make you funny you can't be funny if you have some sort of agenda you can't be funny if you're trying to ascribe morality to it if you're behind morality in some way then you're less funny because you're just you're just trying to say that morality is one thing and that we're all trying to then that we're all agreed to doing right by popular opinion on morality like you can't have an agenda or speak that the world is morally this way or morally that way if you want to be funny like and i feel like you go you would go wrong if you made it political like comedy it can't be political because then it's not funny it becomes becomes unfunny like automatically when you try to throw in your political agenda there's nothing funny about having a political agenda really and and it is more funny the more that you just have no agenda at all if you were a stand-up comedian if you just have no agenda the more that you have no agenda is the more that you're just saying what you like to say and the more that you're saying what you like to say is the more that you understand that you have new things to say that you like to say and that the world continues on there's new things to like and like as long as you consider that there's new things to like you don't have to worry about preserving what you already like or like you don't have to worry about preserving what you are already think is funny which is kind of like what you do with stand-up and when you have to pedal the act to lots of different people like you have to preserve it rather than say what's new to you so i feel like comedy evolves in a direction of you putting out like a new special every day you know which is kind of like a what a podcast is if you are somebody who does a comedy podcast which is what chris D'Elia does he puts out a new comedy special every single week and that's what comedy has evolved for us to do because that's like that's the standard now for entertainment is that well we realize now that you're capable of putting out a comedy special every single week and so why don't you because as long as you're just speaking from your subjective reality on things and that's what's funny about it because what's funny about it is that you don't tailor it to an audience but but what's the more funny that you can be is the more that you understand yourself capable of speaking what's true to you like and you have to you have to know that what you're saying you have to see yourself as being worthy of saying truthful things in order to do that so there's like there's a lot of risk involved it's not like everybody's capable of doing that just like speaking truthfully it's not like everybody's capable of but i'm just like dirt or dirt 
I'm just dir 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 about it. Like Chris D'Elia puts out a puts out a special every week, and they're like always funny because he's just riffing on it. They're always funny because he's just saying what's because he's not trying to make it that he's some sort of tradition. He doesn't go back to what he already said in the past one that much. Like he'll dwell on stuff for a little bit, but he doesn't make that what he is. Like he always rises above any definition that he would give to himself or any any comedy thing that he starts to define himself as. But like that's what would make you a good comedian is that you don't understand yourself to be defined by anything. Uh, you don't understand yourself to be defined. So I guess I'm just saying this is what it takes to be a good comedian. But what I more so than that, what I want to say is that I do like tailor it to an audience somewhat because I do want to sound somewhat moral. Like I don't want to alienate my audience and therefore I'm worried about coming across as cynical. But the less that you worry about coming across as one way is the more that you are a likable person is the more that you because there's being fun about things and there's un, like being fun about things is the same as you understanding that what you do doesn't matter and that like what you say doesn't matter that's what being fun is that's what that's what allowing fun into your life is or like agreeing with people or not taking yourself seriously or allowing yourself to be wrong it's knowing it's knowing that the future continues and there's new things to say like and that your imagination isn't limited because as long as the future continues it's just like as long as you live in the present and understand that all that you can do is live in the present then like it just makes everything that you did or wore or said before stupid if you want to view it that way you can view everything you said as like worthy of ridicule like yourself in the past if you want to continue to be fun and not take yourself seriously then you just understand that what you said in the past isn't you. That's not how you're defined. You are capable of creating new things about yourself. And that's, that is, to me, that's what a person is. It's just that you tell yourself the lie that you're not a, that you're not a person, that reality doesn't continue. You tell yourself that lie. And by telling yourself that lie, you understand yourself to be less of a person and more of a, more of a tradition, more of a, more of a thing that you're supposed to preserve more of a thing that you're always serving you know something that you're always behind that you're always trying to preserve about yourself because it, as long as you see yourself as identified like in one singular way to other people then you're then you're a performer trying to maintain that identity but you get to be fun and enjoyable as long as you don't as long as you're not don't understand yourself to be a performer or that you don't have to please some person like and that's what i want to realize ultimately that's what i want to speak into existence about my existence is that my existence continues and that like i'm not a performer and therefore i have because there's plenty of things that i don't say and there's lots of times where i'll ramble on meaning that i want to say a point but it's difficult for me to say it and then then i can really only end the rambling by actually saying the point because there's things that I want to say. It's just like as I'm speaking, there's inhibitors to my speech because, oh, it'll sound bad to this person or sound bad to this group of people. So you filter it because the filters do need to be there. There is speech that you have to filter out. It's just like the goal is to is to is to say what's acceptable, like still be accepted for what you say and push the boundaries of what's acceptable to say as as best you can. But like 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 there's more that i could say it's just like i'd be worried about displeasing this group of people when ultimately what i feel is true is that i want to speak my what is individually true to me because that's what i that's what god has given me the authority to be like god has given me the authority to be matthew connor like that's what i was miraculously born into existence as like boom you didn't know anything and now and now before you even know anything you're already named matthew connor and like by the time you're even aware of anything you're already named that and so like that's what i that's what i feel god has given me the authority to be is that and like that's that's what god is with me as is just myself because that's what that's what's miraculous about me is that i exist at all is that i'm a person like not that i exist as me and not that matthew connor is interesting 
but that I that I'm a person at all because I really like it would be the overwhelming probability that I wouldn't have existed as this and so therefore I want to speak from what that what math what I think is true I'm not going to speak about myself in the third person because you just sound like you're enshrouding yourself in mysticism or something like uh, I I just want to say what's true to me ultimately and not worry about what groups it would affect and at the point like you ultimately can say that then it really just like lets loose the doors on your vocabulary like you just what's really true to you if you really just allow yourself to speak in terms of that's true to you terms of your language if you don't worry about how your language is interpreted at the point that you don't worry about how people try to translate your language then you're not so much worrying about displeasing groups of people like I don't want to displease groups of people like I don't want to come across as negative to other people I do want to be liked and popular or whatever but like but more important than that is just that I don't like but you could only ever view popularity positively if you understood that you don't need it and like uh you could only because otherwise if it's something that you want to be if you always want to be cool then it's something that you're always trying to preserve like it's like if you like it's something that you're always behind something that you're below something that you're striving after that you're not good enough to ever achieve and so therefore is something that you are serving so to speak if it's something if you're always trying to be cool but never see yourself as being cool then it's something that you're always serving it's something that you've never risen above because it's only at the point that you're like oh yeah i am cool that you get to be that but if it's like oh i'm always trying to be cool then then you never see yourself as cool and it's just like an ideology that you're serving that you're trying to take part in like it's an ideology that you're subject to if you never call yourself cool if that's important to you and so like popularity you can only ever view it positively like you can only have a positive relationship to popularity if you don't want popularity but you know there's some people that would rather be famous or but like i think there's more people that want to be famous than let on that they do like I don't want to displease Christian people with my views like I don't want to displease like I don't want to alienate a Christian audience just by saying that like oh there's maybe some Christian things I don't agree with like I don't have a I don't have a vendetta against Christians but there's like things I'd want to say that don't agree with Christian ideology like I wouldn't want to come across as negative to Christians but like you just would by disagreeing with their belief system as time goes on I will say them and that is inevitable because i'm concerned with living in a world where i'm not afraid of what another group of people would say about me because i'm concerned with sharing my individuality because i believe that to be what is miraculous or transcendent about myself if there is anything at all if that makes sense or doesn't sound entirely arrogant also like the question uh rich or famous would you rather be rich or famous and what is the answer always from people if that if that top topic of conversation comes up the answer is oh i'd rather be rich be like i would be rich that's the answer the answer is i would be rich of course you'd rather have money like just have lots of money you'd much rather be that than famous like uh no it, like to me the answer is obviously famous like i'd much rather be famous than rich like why would you being rich who cares about having money when you can be known by people you'd rather be famous wouldn't you but you can't say that you can't say that your answer to that question is famous because then you just look like a dick like you don't want to look like somebody who wants fame because you're not you're not allowed to say that you want fame that's not an acceptable identity you're not allowed to say like oh i want to be famous actually that just makes you look stupid but like i'd rather be known than have money like what's so great about having money it's like would you rather have influence or have money even though money is sort of influence but like money is just your buying power to do things like i'd rather be known by people like ultimately than have money like you would rather have a lasting story be told about you than have money in the present wouldn't you your answer to that question should be fame always and that is more people's answer than they let on because there's lots of people like it's not my fault that nobody wants to divulge to anybody how much they wish that they were famous 
how much they wish that their life was more than just the mundane that it is. But like at the point that you say that you're not allowed to tell yourself that you're more than just the mundane life you live, then you're limiting yourself to the mundane life. Don't limit yourself. Like there is better than that, whether or not anybody ever knows you. There's better than that, meaning you can just see yourself as existing and like realize that it's a miracle to be here. Like life is life rips. It really does. And that's not my line. That's Crystalia's. But Crystalia, like, who do I emulate more than Crystalia, honestly? So, like, so I got to worry about not make some, making sound like a Crystalia knockoff as long as I'm somebody with a single podcast, just me, myself. So I did talk, so I talked about comedy. I talked about comedy for an hour, so I close out by talking about comedy, too. Like, uh, in my, in my world, like, a perfect world is, like, I start a podcast with me, Crystalia, and Shia LaBeouf. Like, that's my dream for reality, and that's how that's how stupid, like, my vision for reality is. Like, that's your dream. That's that's my dream. That's all I want. I want to get... I want me, Crystalia, and Shia LaBeouf to start a podcast one day. That's what I want from the world. But you know what? It's okay to have ambitions that are, like, way too high, and, it like, it's okay to imagine yourself to want to be famous. Or, like, it's okay to imagine yourself... Because people are silly, they have silly fantasies, like, and we don't we don't give ourselves the patience to like say that we have silly fantasies. And at some point, you get too old that you're like, oh, there's no such thing as dreams or fantasies or imagination. Because being young is is saying that the imaginative side of things does exist, or like, but it's but that comes from you understanding that you have this whole life to live, and so like you have nothing but imagination to live out because it's only like, but the more that you get older and jaded and realize that like what you imagine doesn't actually come true is the more that you just understand yourself to be old and that imagination and having dreams doesn't, isn't important, you know? So don't be an old person. You have to realize that there's new. I have to realize that there's new. I don't live by that. I don't realize that like, and it's only that I get to talk about it that I understand it to be true. Like there's new things like I could just talk about what personally to me is personal or like what's funny to me to say or what my stupid dreams are like all the time. But you can go further and further. There's nothing. Just know that your personality doesn't run out. So stop. Don't try to conserve it and don't try to serve it. Don't try to serve your personality because it's not, there's more to it than just what already happened. And there's more to you than the mundane cycle that you go through or whatever. Like there's more that you can be like, and that is my, that's, that's what I have to say. Uh, but don't, don't listen to me as true. Like listen to other people, listen to lots of people is true. Listen to lots of people is true. So I need to get off this hour shtick. Like I need to get off this hour format. I need to be something other than that. Like, oh, he did 40 minutes. Oh, there's something interesting about that guy. You're like, oh, another hour and two minute podcast. Fuck him. Fuck him. He went an hour and two minutes. Yeah, I was listening to him, but it's just like an hour, two minutes, then followed up by an hour, six minutes. And then he threw in a 58 minute to act like he wasn't. I know, but it's always, it's the same as anybody else that does an hour. I don't know, it's bullshit. Like, if as long as it's that, like, I'm not going to, I've heard that before. I've heard an hour length before. There's nothing different about that. He's not doing anything to push the boundaries. I guess there would be some people out there that they're like, just the format is what is important about the creative process to them. Like, well, is the format evolving in this direction he's not doing anything to evolve that format he's just the same of of the format and so therefore i don't care about his creative message because his creative message isn't creating in the sense that it's creating new formats it's just creating in the sense that it's saying something different that's true like uh creating that's what creating is everybody everybody uh, creation okay whatever i'm gonna okay so i'm gonna end this and uh subscribe thanks for listening